Good evening and welcome to the uh, January 27, 2022 uh, meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the Governor, Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency including an extension of the remote participation provisions of this March 20, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, it is six o'clock and I'll call the meeting to order. Um, there's dial-in information on um, the agenda that's available on the website in case anyone out there is listening who that will help. Um, Few rem reminder before um, hand is that uh, we have meeting guidelines and that's to speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise and non-repetitive. And first thing to do is to um, ask if everyone has had, well, let me take a, a roll call, sorry. Um, Lily Dwight. Present. Alan Swedland. Yes, present. Ben Benson. Present. Annalee Wolfkull. Present. Tim Hilchey, present. Um, and uh, we have two people will be speaking on <clears throat> some, some other uh, possible applications in a, in a little while. Um, did everyone get a copy of the mm -hmm. minutes from the previous meeting? And were you able to review them? Any corrections, additions, omissions? Hearing none, I would accept the motion to accept the minutes and as written. I move that we accept the minutes from our last meeting. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, um, I will take a roll call. Lily Dwight. Uh, accept, yes, whatever. Alan Swedland. Uh, yes. Alan, Ann Lee Wolfco. Yay! <clears throat> ben Benson. Yes. Tim Hilchey. Yes. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> um, okay, so. <clears throat> Tim, I, I have a request to address yes, something about our committee before we get to applicants. Would that be all mm -hmm. right? It just yep. occurred to me when you read the roll call. Um, we are still missing a number of people from this committee. I'm not talking people who normally attend but are absent tonight, but we don't have a representative from um, the recreation department, correct? Yes. And um, is there anybody else? Because I, and then I saw this article in the paper about how the Tritown Beach thing is really getting going. I don't know if they are part of the recreation department or whatever, but um, are, is there something that we can do Cool. Well, thank you for raising that question. So, um, okay. one of the one of the people I believe that's supposed to be on this committee is to serve a function of senior housing, I believe. Um, and since you are the moderator's appointee, I wondered if we might be able to work some switching and say you're now the senior housing person and get another moderator appointment. And um, you know. But that's, that's certainly one thing. And then to, to reach out to the recreation department and really ask them to participate since there are some recreation issues that are gonna be before us and we need their help. Is, and is that, a, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is it a senior housing position or it could be housing? housing? But sure. it, yeah, I, it could be affordable housing. Um, yeah. We'll have to look at the language, but it, it's okay. certainly housing and you're the closest thing we have to that. I have so, no objection if that makes, if that yeah. fills the committee more easily, yeah. if it's more easy, I have no objection to switching my hats. I don't know the process. Right now, yeah, and basically what I'm suggesting is let's look at a way to open up some slots. And since you come all the time, um, if housing is one of those slots that we could fill by that way, um, even though it's an ad hoc committee, it's gonna be around for a while. Um, and then we, could find another person who would be a, a workhorse per participant, um, then I think that, yeah, whatever we can do to get folks to come. Um, I agree. So it sounds good. Uh, any other thoughts on that? 
uh, just on the recreation committee, I, I don't, I, I agree because there's some important recreation uh, things coming up, including probably park and all these other um, issues. And um, I, you know, we've had Rob Ackerman in, in name only, and he's basically just said he's not going to come. So I think reaching out to Sue Antonelli's and saying it, it, it just, you know, we, we can't really conduct recreation business if we don't have somebody from the committee uh, representing the committee. Um, hopefully they can make that, uh, make that happen. Would it be helpful to have the, have the committee write a letter to Sue and copy in the select board? That couldn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Right. Well, why don't we do, why don't we think about doing that, and uh, we can swing back around to that topic unless anyone wants to discuss it any further, but closer to the end of the meeting. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> so the these are the opportunity to have initial discussions with applicants about uh, what they might be submitting to us on March first. So. Um, it, it appears that there are two, two people, um, Pamela, Pamela Hodkins, am I pronouncing that correctly? Hodge, Hodgkins. Hodgkins with a G, okay. With H -A -D -G, H -O -D -G -K -I -N -S. Yeah. Very good. I, I, I thought that it should be that when you spelled it before, but I didn't hear the G, so I, my apologies. And Julie, Julie Chalfant, um, who I think is here. Here, well, I'll let her speak for herself. <laughs> um, so, which of you would like to <clears throat> talk first? If, well, I'm a, I'm on. I don't know if Julie's on. If can, I, can she hear us? Um, well, I'm gonna assume that she can. So, Pamela, why don't we? Uh, why don't you tell us which committee uh, you represent and uh, what project you're gonna talk about? Yes, I am a member of the Ad Hoc Town Common Committee. And on behalf of the members, I would just like to say that our committee has diligently worked for several years on the plan to uh, revamp uh, the Town Common. Our plans for the Town Common redesign <laughs> include looking forward to future improvements um, yeah. for this community and um, especially of the area around the common, which is so frequently used um, by both local people and people who come to our community as tourists. We're committed to ensure that the be easily adapted to make sense with any future changes that might be happening around and on the surrounding roads. And um, the 2013 Complete Streets and Livability Plan um, have been a guiding uh, document in this committee's planning and our vision. We have thought of ADA, um, app, um, um, what's the word I want? ADA. Um, Compliant. Compliance. Compliance, thank you, Ben. Um, we've thought of that. We've, we've thought of the crosswalks. We've thought of the plantings. We've thought of the fountain, the seating. Um, and also um, eventually how it ties into the safety around the center, the core of South Deerfield. So um, I have been away a lot from the meetings and uh, I, don't have internet capability at home, so I have not had a chance to print our copy of our application. And if I may defer to um, one of our committee members um, and ask him if he will add anything to this. Um, but I just wanna say thank you for considering our application. And if I might be allowed to turn this over to our committee member, Ben Benson, um, I hope that's acceptable. Certainly. If it's okay, I, I don't have much to add. I thought that was a great presentation, Pam, for someone who claims not to have been at the meetings. You've been at a lot. 
And um, <laughs> the, the situation with the town common is, is just so central to the overall well being of the town, I think, and moving forward. And we're, we've got a lot of ideas, but we've tried to rein them in and concentrate just on the common alone, not ruling out possible future endeavors. But there have been many projects over the last several decades that have come to nothing because they ran out of momentum. And we would like to see this through. We're restrained by the fact that the town's own, town owns one street and the Commonwealth owns two streets. And there's all sorts of things that can't be done because it's not within the jurisdiction. But we have uh, we're put together a package with the help of the Berkshire Design Group that we think will meet an awful lot of many people's wishes. Uh, we had a public meeting last week and and we had a lot of good feedback from people who are interested enough to check in. And um, there's a lot of details. There's a lot of little stuff. And uh, certainly we're, we're willing to consider input from more people if we need to. But uh, Trevor McDaniel's on the committee and uh, could not be here tonight. And he's been a strong proponent of this and really thinks it'll be in the best interest of the town, fitting in with the complete streets and, um, you know, helping us move forward in, in making the downtown that much more attractive and um, useful and accessible to all the citizens. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Ben. Um, I just wanna share with the rest of the CPC committee um, that I received an email from Kate Lawless, who's the chair of the committee, your committee um, this afternoon saying that she, could, she and Trevor couldn't attend but that they would be seeking and they would have their application into us on March 1st of $350,000 to um, make this project happen. Um, it, it appeared to me that there was um, <clears throat> no discussion of trying to, and probably because it's a town project, matching funds or, but perhaps there's some in-kind work that could be done um, that that might be offered as a as an, an additional thing I and mean, I don't know what that would be in kind supervision in kind you know so it's something to think about because um, that's something that we've asked for in the in the past um, and um, I do have a question into the community preservation coalition and I'm sure it's a silly question but um, in the, the, the available uses, allowable uses of funds, because the CPC is newer than the town common, this, this question arises. Um, the town common has been around for a long time, but when you look into the, um, the chart that uh, talks about um, what can be done with, um, I'm gonna actually share the screen and show you why, um, I had this concern. Am I able to share, Alex? Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Okay, thank you. Yep. So it's it's really, you know, being overly um, cautious, but if you look under definition, you see um, rehabilitate, restore, and it's, it says means remodel, reconstruct, repair, ex extraordinary, not maintenance, to make property functional for the intended use. So that seems all clear. But then you go under the recreational land, which I think is what this could be under, and even under the open space. Yes, if acquired or created with community preservation funds. So obviously the town common wasn't created with those funds. And um, so, I just wanted to clear that one up in case somebody asked a question. Lily. Um, I think that they would have to be under historic resources to your point um, because it's it doesn't meet open space or recreation. Real property, yeah, that's probably true. So I it think- It fits that, under a lot of categories, so. Yeah, but I, but I think it's a good thing for them to know as they're filling it out, but that how important it is, but it does seem to me it should be historic resources. Good. Well, I knew there was a, a reason why I raised that point so I could have somebody else help me with it. Um, but in any case, um, 
So I've got, I've got that question and I'm sure it's gonna come back yes and it'll probably be, you should consider that under historic resources and so. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, yes. Um, okay, since, so in the interest of time, do, you, do either of you have any other things since we will be in, was that figure correct, $350,000? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's always helpful to have supporting documentation of cost estimates, et cetera. So I'm sure you do because you've come up with a figure. Yeah. And we have the estimate from Berkshire Design Group for the work that's going to be required. And, um, right. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add before I um, open up the meeting to another applicant? Just thank you for accepting our application and considering it. It has been, um, an immense task uh, by all the committee members. And uh, in memory of Jane Trajer, we hope that this does come to fruition soon. All right, well, thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome to stay and, and listen, Pamela. Thanks. Julie, are you, are you able to, there you go. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. Um, so, so I don't have a grand formal presentation or anything, although I do have a mostly put together application. Um, I think the application is, is going to come from David Wolfram, not from me. Um, I've just been helping putting together the, the information. Um, the project is um, upgrading, rehabilitating what I've been calling the old grammar school building, which is the building that the senior center used to be in until just most recently. Um, maybe you have that one, um, everybody with me on which building we're talking about? Okay. Yes, okay. Um, so the plan is to rehabilitate that building and turn it into the new home for the um, all the municipal offices. Um, and that has a, a couple very nice purposes. One is to save this building that is a historical resource of the town that, you know, it's hundreds of years old and it's, you know, used to have the grammar school in it. And then since then it's had the BFW in it. It's had the doctors and nurses worked it out of it. It's senior center was in there. So it's part of the um, community for years. Um, the other thing it does is put the town hall offices into a bigger building with more space and more storage. And once it's been rehabilitated, it will have, you know, better energy conservation, better, you know, atmosphere, um, all of that. Um, so that is the goal of the project. Um, we have gone through and answered most of the questions. It would be under the historical preservation. Um, option. I've talked with the Historic Commission and got a bunch of old documents and incorporated some of that information in there. So that will be available in the um, application. We have letters of support from the Town Building Advisory Committee and the, I always get this wrong, CCI Connecting Community Initiatives? Collective? I can never remember if it's collective or connecting. Um, <laughs> Uh, CCI, and I expect that the Historical Commission will, will send a letter in support as well. I just don't have that in my hot little hands yet. Um, we have um, very rough drawings of what this could be like, but the, um, the application is actually two phases. The first phase is to get real architectural drawings, and then the second phase is to actually do the work. In addition to there's one other piece. The first phase is get the real drawings. Plus there's a couple things that need to be done just to keep the building intact until we can get around to fixing it up. There's been some water intrusion, um, some damage. There's some bricks falling out of the facade and that needs to be kind of held together and patched up long enough so that the building doesn't fall down before we fix it up. Um, so that piece is in phase one as well. I'm putting the way I wrote it, it again, it's not final yet, um, but we'll have it into you before your deadline. Um, the way I wrote it is phase one and phase two in the same application. Phase one, um, there's an estimate of $350,000 for that full architectural drawing and those minor repairs. Um, phase two, the cost of it will depend on what comes out of phase one, obviously, 
we're estimating 4 million based on the, um, the GRLA uh, um, building assessment that was done maybe two years ago. Um, that that's the, um, the town building advisory committee hired GRLA to come in and do an assessment of several buildings in town. This was one of the buildings that was assessed. Um, out of that assessment, they came up with kind of a recommendation of basically repairs to the building to make it um, usable. They did recommend retaining the building and repurposing it and reusing it. Um, their estimate was not 4 million, it was closer to 3 million, but it was two years ago and we're worried that prices have gone up and whatever. So that $4 million is very rough. The reason it's in this application right now is that I think um, the town hopes to get through that full drawing process and be able to, to start this rehabilitation before next fiscal year, which means it wouldn't have time to go through your review cycle again before next fiscal year. Um, I guess I'm seeking feedback on that idea. <laughs> um, with Because um, it, it's hard without the architectural drawing to get a solid number um, to put against what the rehabilitation would cost. So that sounds like a question. Does anybody on the committee want to Step up, Lily. <laughs> I've always got an idea. Um, <laughs> it seems to me that, well, some of it we should go through that chart that Tim has about what aspect of things that you're applying for, because it might be two different aspects. One might be the recovery aspect. I don't know. I don't know, but we should probably go through that graph. That's just one thing that occurred to me since there's two different things happening. But, um, and this was a question that I had as well about, um, we have never, to my knowledge as the CPC, come to a special town meeting. We always, our cycle just goes through to the one town meeting. But if um, we could be a part of the special town meeting, is there any reason that we cannot? That's, I mean, I don't really have an answer to Julie. I have a question because it may be the case that with everything that's going on between the town common, senior housing, <laughs> and this building, that people might be needing um, the town meeting to approve more activity on, on the CPC so that it doesn't have to jam everything into the one. Okay, <clears throat> does any other, per I have some thoughts, but I wanna let anyone else on the committee speak up. Um, I uh, just uh, a couple of things uh, quickly. Um, this is Alan. Um, <coughs> the, um, I think it's very important that the um, proposal be extremely clear on what are the um, historic preservation Reconstruction issues versus the uh, uses uh, of the of the building because I think uh, we do have much deeper guidelines from the Community uh, Preservation Act about what is allowed under historic preservation and what isn't and so I suggest that make, make just making sure particularly for the first phase which I think you can very easily do because that is what you're doing is you're preserving the building and getting it back up uh, to uh, a standard that then makes it really uh, good for, for going beyond. But I just don't know exactly um, from that total number you're presenting, how much of it could come under CPA historic preservation. And um, I can go back and, and do a little bit <coughs> uh, checking on my own, but I have been look, looking at that various times over the time I've been on the committee. Um, the other thing, if, if the select board is going to be the lead, um, I, yeah, this is awkward, but um, in the past, we've had the select board a couple of times request proposals out of the deadlines and for filing applications and uh, so on. And it's, uh, it becomes a, a real problem when, you're, uh, when you have other uh, committees or other um, perhaps non uh, community, I mean, non-town boards and committees 
who are submitting and are, are entitled to submit, but we've been very strict with them on meeting the uh, deadlines for applications and the various pieces of the cycle. So um, it sounds like you've got it pretty well together, um, but I just want, wanted to alert you to the fact that it's, I think for good reason, it's really important to, uh, so I, I'm not sure how that fits into your phase one and phase two, uh, whether this would be a two applications or is it, um, something you're, you know, just how that's going to play out. Do you have any idea to, to respond to Alan's questions, Julie? <clears throat> we lost Julie. I saw it looked like it was maybe frozen. Yeah, she might be dialing back in. Anna Lee. Yeah, just a question as to whether or not um, it's appropriate to have a an amount not to exceed, if that is too general for um, a an amount. I know she was talking about concerns well, about not having an exact number. There, um, I'm just gonna, while Julie's not on, I'm gonna <clears throat> say a couple of things. Anticipating that we were gonna have some of these types of projects from the town, you know, including the, the congregational church um, I talked to the Community Preservation Coalition, um, Stuart Saginar, who's the director, and he describes this process as um, adaptive rehabilitation of historic buildings. And he says there's a lot more leeway than we might think under that. Um, but that's why um, he also said that the town as part of its process should hire, um, and architectural firms know these people, someone whose who's, um, specialty is res restoration of historic buildings to go through with them and say, you know, if they have an idea, yes, this fits into and can be done, or no, this is not permissible. Um, so um, I think that would go a long way to helping the town focus and I'll repeat a little of this for Julie once she gets back on. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that term adaptive rehabilitation should, Julie needs to know about that. Right. It sounds like that would be really good language for her. You there, so, Julie? Yeah, Julie, sorry. You're... My internet glitched out there for a minute. So I lost you right when you were saying that I had to meet the deadline. <laughs> uh, Alan, why don't you just basically... I think what we're going to have to do is I, we need to have a conversation among the committee that um, one of the things that I talked with Stuart Saganor of the Community Preservation Coalition, he's the executive director for the state, and he said a lot of other communities are on a different cycle, and so that's a discussion for a different night, but he says a lot of communities actually do this in the August-September time period so that when annual town meeting comes around, this is a lot clearer. So um, a project of this nature, depending on whether it's actually well researched and well prepared and um, you know there's a real plan, et cetera, there's going to have to be a second phase application. Um, and it, if you're if the town is looking to do this in you know in the typical October special town meeting, then we're going to have to be flexible as a committee to to you know work with the town and um, and the other component about it is that we don't have a lot, we don't have $4 million in our pot. Yeah. Yeah. And so there are two ways to deal with this. One is a bonding issue based on our local um, receipts for the CPA. And that's, that's a legitimate thing to do. Um, but I will also discuss that more, more in depth after we're done with um, Julie's presentation. So Alan, why don't you just explain briefly what you were saying when Ju Julie disappeared? Well, it, sound, it sounds like you heard most of what I was saying, Julie, about the the uh, just the, about the criteria and you know getting make, making sure you the pub, the pub, the application does well with that, and then also just some concern about the uh, phases and the timing and um, and um, you know being able to meet deadlines. And I think we have didn't we do one of the park. Um, considerations under a special town meeting, Tim, do you remember? We did. Yeah, was, um... so it's not, um, yeah, we can, Lily, I think, 
do, I mean, we have one precedent at least for doing that. Although I know sometimes the uh, select board and folks uh, don't like to, to do things other than the reasons why they're specifically having a special town meeting. Right. Well, I mean, one of the things that will be perhaps reassuring to Julie and, and David Wolfram as they bring this forward is that if the $350,000 request, if that's what it is, is approved at ten town meeting, it's in anticipation of the larger project going forward. Yeah. And then it's yeah. a question of getting everything organized and done properly. So financing's in place, et cetera. And Julie is the chair of the finance committee, you know, would be in a good position to <clears throat> say, what is our bonding ability and how much are we going to want to do with debt and so forth? And, um, you know, what other sources are we going to be looking at? Are we going to be talking to, you know, Senator Comerford and Rep Blay and trying to find, you know, money for, to, to match right, up with this sources. project in some way? So, um, <clears throat> so it sounds like you're, you, you're, your application is coming together reasonably well, Julie. Is that your assessment? I think it is, um, except that I don't have any estimates beyond that, the GRLA thing for phase two. But other than that, we're in pretty good shape, I think. I can show you. I have some like very rough drawings. Do you want more information now? or You could take five minutes and show this to us. Okay. Um, let me see what I can... Yeah, I think it's a project that a lot of people in uh, uh, committees and so on have been involved in. And I think it's a very good thing to come before the uh, CPA or CPC. All right. So, um, oh, you know what? It's going to be in the attachments. Nice pick you got there, though. <laughs> All right. Did I, I share the whole thing? I green AstroTurf on the stairs. <laughs> All right. Let's try this again. Share screen. Let's share the whole screen. All right. Here we go. So um, we have a rough drawing. So this is the um, kind of exterior of the current building. Um, and then there's an addition on the back into which would it would be like a tower with an elevator and a stairwell and a, an alternative entrance at the back. Um, and they roughly laid out, um, here, it's probably teeny, isn't it? Um, you know, like who could go into each space. So that's the basement level. Here's the main floor with like the town clerk and inspections. This is not final by any means. It was just a, what could we do if we put people in here um, with new bathrooms, accessible bathrooms. Um, and then um, here's the second floor with like select board and assessor office. And then the third floor, but I don't, I don't remember what was up here, but um, recreation and all of this, each floor is accessible through this tower with the elevator and the stairs in it. Um, uh -huh. And then this gives you kind of a, I think this image is horrible, but I think this was originally a picture of the outside of the building. So you can see the outside of the building and then this tower on the back with the, you know, like glass and the stairwell and the elevator on it. And then there's also an idea that if they can get funding through some sort of municipal building project, they would add another building on the back of that. And that building could be like a community center, senior center, something like that with offices upstairs. That, that idea is very rough and would, would not be a request to the CPA. Um, funding it would be completely separate funding but that building would also be accessible would use this same elevator and stairwell thing built onto the back is the like, idea behind it i like um, the fact that the architecture also looks uh, very compatible with uh, the the architecture of the of the building of the you know old grammar school yeah yeah exactly 
And um, and for this to fall within the CPA funds, it would need to be it would need to follow the guidelines of the Secretary of Interior for whatever rehabilitation of historic um, buildings, um, which I've gone through and looked at, and um, surprisingly to me, did, were not nearly as onerous as I thought they were going to be um, when I read through them. It, it seems fairly reasonable, and um, like you can have an addition to the building. It's just the addition needs to not be ugly. It needs to like sort of match the scale and yeah. and tone of the building that you're attaching it to, and um, you need to maintain the kind of the look and feel, but you can repurpose, you can, you can upgrade for energy. So you can put new windows in and um, have more energy efficient um, use of the building, but you need to make it look and feel sort of similar to what it was. Um, yeah. And... I just saw 2,600,000. That's, oh, that's the assessed, assessed value. value. Okay. That's the assessed value. Yeah. Um, which is one of the things they ask you. So it's got a description of the building. It's got the map of where it is. Um, so I've got most of the stuff in here, the property card. Um, so again, like this is what is not filled in. You can see it's all blank here still. So um, I need to get estimates for these things and get them in here. Um, and then this was the GRLA appraisal, um, which was essentially 3 million for the upgrade plus another, it, it actually gets up to 4.2 million if you do these, um, the full, all the pieces they were talking about doing. Um, but that's all I have for estimates so far. The 4.2 doesn't include the, the, uh, scene, the back building though. Right, right. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, but it does include, um, the elevator and the stairs and everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's clear now. Yeah. <clears throat> so the senior center just is referring to the fact that that's been the use. Right. When they did it, it was the senior center building, and yeah. um, that was what they were referring to it as. So, Julie, um, are you anticipating that in this application, the work that appears in the column one year here, which um, is is the is the work of just making sure it stays up and securing the envelope is that what that is um they had um yes and no so they also included in this um in their one year thing um the like the fire protection was inadequate and the alarm system was inadequate and there were some things along those lines, which since the building is not being used, we wouldn't worry about doing right away. Like the only things that we would worry about doing right away is stuff that would cause the building to fall down if we don't fix it. So um, the architecture and the building envelope plus the incredible inflation that we've experienced. Is that about? Well, plus the drawings. Oh, so the phase right, one the includes the drawings. That's the yeah. bulk of it actually. Okay. Um, Thank you. And yeah. it's, I would think that um, a lot of the building envelope work to preserve the structure is going to be using existing materials and yep. it's going to be mortar, it's going to be mm -hmm. slate, it's going to be those kinds of things that are not necessarily as subject to inflation as some other things. The workers, of course, their salaries will be whatever they are, but right. to be determined. Okay, does anyone else have any uh, need to see this um, screen share? Uh, any other questions from Anna Lee? Do you have any thoughts? I think she walked oh, away. No, here I am, I'm muted. Um, <laughs> no, I think that sounds, it sounds um, good, you know, and just figuring out the phases is the issue. Okay. Yeah. Ben, do you have Ben? Do you have thoughts? Not at all. I mean, I, I guess I wondered where we're going to have a big meeting room, but that's going to come up sooner or later. Yeah. But we we continue to use the current big meeting room in the uh, former school building. That's not part of the town offices, but well, it's, there, you know, the town offices are all around it now. 
there was talk about um, the congregational church becoming a site for larger gatherings. Great. Yeah. So, uh, and and I like that. So that's one of the that if, in the CCI meetings, the focus has um, been really on creating a a campus, a synergy there that where people from the community will go to do their town work and to have their recreation and to have their meetings. And maybe someday we'll all have our meeting in one of those rooms. <laughs> I, think, I think that sounds great. And yet another repurposing of a historic building. So that sounds good. Um, <clears throat> I did have one comment though. I, I believe Julie that there was strong pressure to make sure that the historic commission had a room on the third floor, if oh, I yeah. recall correctly. Yes. <laughs> <saying>. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was. I, I probably a... need to write something in the document that because the it has those drawings, but that was very rough. That is by no means the final where things are going to end up. Um, um, I'll add that comment in there. Excellent. <clears throat> One thing that I will just. I will promise that we won't have back-to-back -back meetings um, next time. So there'll be more time when the actual applications are here to have a really good conversation. And then we'll follow up with a meeting a couple of weeks after that to um, <clears throat> make sure that uh, what improvements we need to make so that when we get to town meeting, assuming that we recommend this, and I think we all agree that that building is a wonderful building and we wanna do what we can to help the town preserve it. Um, that everything's in order. So um, the one thing I will say is I took a bonding um, a seminar that the CPC ran and it talks about um, how you can leverage your yearly income against a large loan. Um, it would be nice, and I, I know this is a pipe dream, but that if the CCI and this project could somehow dovetail so that we could do one bonding, do a larger, a larger um, loan that you save on the cost of getting them, because there's there's costs incurred in book bonding and going out to the market and getting these things, and um, every time you bond, you diminish the amount of money you can borrow. So, um, so those are things to just think about, and uh, and particularly as the finance. Uh, committee thinks about these things, it would be helpful to have your input on those kinds of issues. Yeah, I was talking about bonding with Barb, um, the town clerk who just left, unfortunately. But um, so there are a lot of costs with bonding, but you can do short term loans for anything up to 10 years, and we would be able to pay this off, assuming our you know, rate of income continues where it was well before 10 years, um, in which case the costs are much lower than bonding. Mm -hmm. um, but it still counts against our debt ceiling for the town. Right. Um, At what level do we start worrying about that, Julie? Um, where are we now and where will we start worrying? Yeah, I should have those numbers at the tip of my mind, but I don't. Um, because we just committed to uh, the the wastewater treatment plant loan. Um, so we are allowed to have 5% of our assessed value. Um, and um, I think there's about 14 million left in that available before we hit that cap. Um, there's also... Legally, you're allowed 5%. There's like all these warnings saying you really don't want to get super close to that 5% because that starts to make the people loaning you money nervous and then your rates go up. Um, so, but there's no like, I haven't seen a guideline as, you know, how close do you get before you start worrying kind of thing. Um, but okay. so it's definitely the... This is something I've talked about a little bit in CCI, but I feel like the town needs to set their list of priorities so that you know we have that that space left before we hit the cap for our um, our loan and what you know what's our priority and what do what do we want to use that for? Um, yep. 
is, is there a difference though between um between banking on the cpc money and i mean because that's like a, a a set aside and that like i know sunderland used their senior housing their housing money as a as basically for the, to get the loan because they know every year they're going to have x thousands of dollars well, i think i can answer the question if you don't mind julie it's basically um even though it's leveraged against cpc money and it's a it's a separate revenue re stream the town is the one that's going to bond and then, so it's it always on the towns the town is on the hook that's actually know. what I was going to say too, because we have the full wastewater treatment plant is against our debt limit, even though three quarters of that is actually paid off by user fees. Um, so I, I think that's probably true. Although, yeah, and the wastewater treatment plant's like forty years or something, right? Wasn't that yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. Just in time to rebuild it again. <laughs> Um, is there anything else that we need to ask Pamela or Julie? Um, if not, uh, we, I do want to bring up senior housing as, as another potential applicant. Just briefly update the committee. Sure, five minutes. Five minutes, less, take less. Um, senior housing is applying for a technical services grant through the FERCOG to do the feasibility study for senior housing. So we, at this time, are hoping we do not have to come to the CPC with an application. We will find out the first week in February though. And if we do not get that technical grant, we too will be appearing on March 1st. Just wanted to put that out there, okay? All right, and the final thing that I, I have had very, very, minimal conversation actually it's not even conversation it's email um there was a question raised about the tritown beach um and whether it would be available for cpc funds my sense is that since it's tritown it would involve three different cpcs getting together and so i can't imagine that that's going to happen in time for annual town meeting um, but i haven't had a chance to really talk with a i don't even know who the potential applicant would be so Anna Lee, you're muted. Here I am. <laughs> um, yeah, just wondering as we go forward with our meetings, I know um, as I've looked at uh, open meeting law requirements for agendas and also just thinking as a, as a resident, if we're possible to have as much detail um, as possible with which applicants or which projects might be coming before us because I think that might generate some more interest and get some more people to, residents to also come and listen which I think absolutely is yeah as I said at the, the beginning of the meeting that the next the next agenda will actually be one that you can say oh that they're, they're talking about the old grammar school and they're talking about the town common right. so definitely <clears throat> and those documents I don't know if they'll be available electronically but um <clears throat> If we had a, an IT department, they would be, but uh, we don't. Um, so yeah, we'll have to share as much as possible on screen and so forth so that people in the community can, can learn. Well, if they come in, if the applications come in as PDFs, we can, uh, yeah, and they come in with a head, enough lead time, we can make those available on our uh, link uh, on, the, on the town website, right? Right. Yeah, okay. but I see what you have. Lily, did you have, oh, Pamela? Yes, just uh, so you know, our application has extensive uh, designs and graph, uh, graphics from the Berkshire Design Group that will be accompanying the application. Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you have a, another comment or question, Lily? Um, no, I had a public service announcement. Um, I would, I just want to tell everybody to not email your census document in because it is in violation of Mass 201 CMR 17, because it is protected information as your birth date, your name and your address and should never be sent in an email and or in the clear unless you have a secured email account. 
So I would strongly suggest to everyone, I have informed our security officer uh, in town of this. And I just, everybody that I talked to, it cursed me, I should just tell you, don't email it in, okay? Just don't do it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's, we've got five minutes left. Is there anything? Um... Quick question. Yes. Tim, um, I sent you the name of one person. Are we any closer to getting an infographic the way you had thought about that? Well, I was gonna let the applicants go unless they wanna sit and listen to this. Okay, yeah. Um, nope. Julie and Pamela, you're free to leave because this is all yes. inside you. baseball at this point. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Pamela. Pamela. Bye. Thanks. Good Thank night. you all. All right. Thank you, Julie. Bye, Julie. Too. Um, Tim, I just, um, I, I was, you know, as you know, absent for sec the second half of uh, the last meeting. And uh, do we have our, I know sometimes our, our meeting dates are not exactly in sync with the deadlines on the application. Um, and so I, I, I wondered whether you set those, those dates in the last meeting for our next meetings. The only thing that I've done, um, and you'll have to go onto the website, it has the meetings beginning on March 1st yes. going forward. We have to decide whether we probably need another meeting and maybe we need another meeting to talk about you know, non-application stuff because I've talked to one graphic designer today that has worked with CCI, you know her, um, Lily. I think you worked with her on, did you work with her? Um, Lynn Ruddy? I yeah, think is her that, name. yeah, I worked with her on the CCI um, logo and stuff. And then Ben suggested a name that I hadn't been able to reach out to yet, but um, this is for the, yeah. this is for, for graphics that would tell our story. Yeah. And, um, I suggested to Lynn that maybe we would want them to come come to a meeting so that she can have a conversation with us about what do we want and what kind of information are we trying to communicate. Mm. And that would she would do free and then she would be able to tell us this is what I think what how much time it would take and what it would cost. Um, and right. I assume the same for Ben, the person you're speaking about. Yeah, I, I think she'd be willing to find out, you know, I, she would rather know what we want so she can deliver it. Right. Um, we, we, had, we can use administrative funds for this, right? Right. And um, the, um, I, I, did we talk about the Sunderland um, CPA, CPC website uh, or li web link on their projects where they have this particular yeah, what I would like to do, let me ask a question. Do we do we want to have another meeting? Because Lily has to leave in two minutes. Um, and and if so, so does Annalee, right, Annalee? <clears throat> yeah. So well, we can we can go a couple minutes more. So long. As I can't. I have a conservation commission meeting. Oh, you have. I see. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Um, I think we should have a meeting to uh, have the designers come if they're interested in presenting. Okay, so early in February. Are there any days that uh, people could be here? And what nights are you actually free, Lita, when you're not committed to every other committee? Right, exactly. Um, um, there's a lot going on with presentations to the select board and stuff for CCI as well. Hang on a second. Yeah, we have the 10th and the 17th or the 18th. 17th, um, that yeah. Yeah, I think. I can't 10th do and the 17th. 10th. Wednesday I can, I can. nights, I can do. How do you guys look on Wednesday nights? As long as we're not doing, so that's a select board meeting sometimes. Alex, is, yeah. that, is that a select board meeting, Alex? Can you do Wednesday nights? Uh, um, yeah, that's sort of um, their day, but um, we do have two accounts, so we might be able to do it. But Well, yeah, um, and Lily, you have an account. Could we use it? And We absolutely can use yeah. it. I'm fine with that. And so, Jen knows how to handle it when I do that. Yeah, clear it with Jen because I messed her up the other day and we had a fiasco. So definitely talk okay. to Jen. <laughs> yeah. I definitely will. So February um, 9th. Right. And what well, I would I, ask is, I, is we'll I focus can't on. Can't. Huh? I can't do the 9th. I'm okay. out of town and I'm not going to be where I can. Um, where when I've got can a, you do it? When can you do it, Alan? 
I well, somebody mentioned the 17th. I can do the 17th. 17th, we have a meeting. Yeah, it's an informational meeting for the, the whole town, and we're all involved in it, right? Yeah. Oh, is that, uh, yeah, that's right. I better get that on my calendar. Yeah, you better. <laughs> what about the 16th? Are you out of town? No, the uh, the 16th, 16th should work. All right. So me, why don't we tentatively... Well, what, about, what about the second next week? What the heck? Um, I mean, I think uh, the second is the Monday? Wednesday. Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Why do I have a feeling of I've got a problem? <laughs> feeling of impending doom? Well, it's because it's Groundhog Day, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's see. You see the your second, shadow. Uh, Next Wednesday. No, that I that that. Oh no, there's something. I know. I I know what it is. I, I I'm actually. It's actually the fact that we have a dinner get together with some friends. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you socially active people. <laughs> Not very often, believe me, yeah. but. All right. So, okay. And that um, has already been postponed once. So uh, we should aim for the 16th. Back to the 16th. Yeah. How about that? And what I'd suggest is in the interim, go find websites that you think tell the story of some town well. And we don't have a Google Drive, but share them with everybody. And maybe we can even share them with some of the, you know, we can discuss, this is good, this is not good. And, um, um, okay. And I'll get in touch with Alison Wood to with see Sunderland. that she's available then. Six o'clock, okay. I prefer 6.30 if possible, because I don't get home till sometimes quarter to six. 6.30, okay for everyone? Um, okay. If it's a short meeting, but it's gonna be a long meeting, right? Well, I, that's okay. I can, I can you don't do have to stay the whole time, time Alan. <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, I'm interested in this, though. I'd like to see these. Uh, come no, I think the designers to show Tim. That would be great. Yeah, I will. We'll I'll invite, invite them. them. I'll invite yeah. Allison. Right. All right. So, um, if, if there's nothing else, I'm going to delay sharing this. I, I think I sent the the seminar I took to everyone. Right. Yes. Okay. You did, yeah. All right. So, if there's nothing else. Um, We've scheduled our next meeting and I entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.